Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show how to create your own auto bed leveling sensor for less than 30 bucks. Depending on what supplies you already have laying around, you can possibly get away with paying considerably less than that, but all parts considered, $30 is probably a fair estimate. This sensor should work with any printer that has an aluminum bed and the ability to support Marlin firmware, but I'm going to set this up for my CR10 specifically. For those of you who can't afford it or aren't comfortable with soldering or just like getting free stuff, I'm going to be giving away two of these auto bed leveling systems near the end of this video, so either wait until the end or skip ahead for details on that. If you're planning on making one yourself, the supplies you will need are one Arduino Nano, one 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter breadboard DC jack module, one 9 volt DC adapter with a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter plug, one 6 volt to 36 volt inductive or capacitive sensor of your choosing with brown, black, and blue wires. You'll also need some spare wires for hooking everything up. The bare wire on these should be around 0.6 millimeters or smaller when it's stripped. Otherwise, you may have a hard time fitting them into the holes of the Arduino. You'll need soldering supplies. Optionally, you may also want to get two 3-pin DuPont connectors with male and female pins, and also a female JST connector that matches the plug on your ZN stop. Arduino Nanos are pretty cheap to come by, so you can buy them for around $16 for a pack of five on Amazon, or if you find a cheaper option with the same specs, go with that. I bought the breadboard DC jack module from Tinkersphere for around 2 bucks since they seemed like the most reputable and most affordable option. Then after filming about half of this video, they completely changed the design of the part. I emailed them to ask for dimensions of the new design so I could try to incorporate it, but they never bothered to reply. I did find a few other sources online for this part, so if you want to use the case I designed, you'll probably want to pick up one of those. Also, for the DC power adapter you go with, you'll need to pay attention to which side is the positive and which is the negative. I had my Nano wired up to work with a spare 9 volt power supply that I had laying around, but I ordered some more from Amazon to include in the giveaway, and it turns out those are wired in reverse. I'll explain in more detail when I'm showing how to wire this up, but it's probably best if you're aware of this before you start ordering parts. When ordering parts, you'll have the choice between inductive and capacitive sensors. In my opinion, you're better off going with an inductive sensor. The difference between the two is as follows. Inductive sensors create a magnetic field that pretty much only detects metal, so if you have a glass bed or a glass sitting on top of your bed, then an inductive sensor isn't going to work how you want it to. While it's true you can get away with sensing the aluminum bed underneath the glass on top, that doesn't mean the glass is going to follow the same curve as the aluminum. In most cases, it won't. So odds are good, even if you can sense the aluminum under the glass and take your bed leveling points that way, you're going to end up with a bad first layer or possibly even scratched or broken glass. Capacitive sensors, on the other hand, will sense glass and metal and possibly farm animals from two blocks away. It is true you can adjust the sensitivity of your capacitive sensor to accurately measure the distance between your nozzle and the glass bed on your printer, but the sensitivity is affected by practically everything. If the nozzle temperature is too hot, your sensor might trigger. If your hand is adjusting the screw on top of the sensor, the sensor might trigger. Even something as small as humidity in the air affects how accurate a capacitive sensor is. In my opinion, this is way more hassle than it's worth. If you're interested in knowing more about these types of sensors, I highly recommend Tom's Sensor Showdown video where he goes into way more depth on the subject than I could ever hope to cover. So if the inductive sensor doesn't work on glass and a capacitive sensor is painful to use, what's the third option? Assuming you have an aluminum bed with glass on top, take the glass off. I know you're thinking, blasphemy, but hear me out. The whole purpose of an auto bed leveling sensor is to measure the distance from multiple spots on your bed, make a map of those distances, then raise and lower your nozzle accordingly to match. That means that even if your aluminum bed is warped ever so slightly, the nozzle will raise and lower to accommodate that. Also, Marlin Firmware has an option to smooth out the bed leveling algorithm after a few layers, so that even if your first layer isn't 100% perfectly flat, the rest of your print should still be as accurate as possible. It's true that plastic doesn't stick to aluminum, so you will need some kind of surface on top of the aluminum to print on. For testing purposes, I've been using masking tape, which works great for one-off scenarios, but something like BuildTac or even a PEI sheet will work beautifully. 
If applied correctly, either of these will match the exact curvature of your aluminum bed and provide a perfect surface to print on while still allowing the sensor to do its thing with the aluminum. In addition to those benefits, removing the glass from the bed will make the bed lighter, which means less potential for skipped steps in the Y-axis. Still not sold? Here's a picture of the side of the bed on my Prusa i3 Mark IIs. The aluminum bed on my CR10 is considerably flatter than the bed on my Prusa, but the Prusa is pretty much considered the gold standard for print quality in the under $1,000 price range. Anyway, with all of that said, either sensor will work with this nano bed leveling setup, but if you're going for quality and reliability, you're probably better off sticking with the inductive sensor. To get started, you'll need to print out a case to hold your nano and DC jack module. Also, you'll probably want to print a mount for your printer that fits the sensor you bought. I've included a link in the description to the case I designed for the Nano with the DC jack module I used, and there are plenty of models on Thingiverse for sensor mounts, like this one. When you've got all of your parts and you're ready to start assembling, cut two pieces of preferably red and black wire about 3 inches long to run as your positive and negative wires from the DC jack to the Arduino. Then cut another two pieces of wire 8 to 10 inches long to run power out to your sensor. Strip both ends of the short wires to expose about a quarter inch of wire on each end, and strip one end of the two long wires the same amount. Next, twist the ends of the two long wires together with one end of the two short wires. These two wires twisted together should be small enough to fit into the holes of the Arduino. Next, you'll push the twisted together red ends into the VN hole on the Arduino, and the twisted together black ends will go into the ground pin right next to it. Push them in from the top of the Nano so that the insulation is on the same side as the USB port, then fold the bare wires over the bottom edge to keep the wires from falling out when you're soldering. But make sure the wires aren't touching each other. Flip the Arduino over and solder the wires into place being extra careful to only touch the wire and the pin hole that it's coming through with the soldering iron. Once your wires are soldered into the Arduino, the next step is to solder the other end of the short wires into the DC jack module. If the center pin of the power adapter is negative like the adapter linked in the description below, then you'll want the black wire to go to 1 and red to go to 2. If the adapter is reversed, you'll have to hook up red to 1 and black to 2. The same as with the Arduino, push the wires through the pinholes and bend them over the edge of the board. Then flip the board over and solder them in to hold them in place. Next, if you're using the 2-pin or the 3-pin JST connector, you'll need to solder the pins to the Arduino in pins D2 and D3, or D2, D3, and D4 with the notches facing outside of the Arduino. Then you'll want one more wire about 8 to 10 inches long, preferably a different color than red or black, to solder into the D10 pin on the Arduino. After all of the soldering is done, trim any excess wires off of the bottom of the board to make sure the Arduino and the DC jack will fit into the case. Now if you're using my nano case, you'll place the nano into the case USB port first and make sure the USB port is fully exposed in the side hole. Then put the DC jack in on top of the Arduino. You may have to put the jack into the side hole first, then rotate the board down into place, but it should fit. When it's sitting on top of the Arduino, check again to make sure the Nano is pushed up against the USB port hole, then use a short M3 screw to hold the DC jack down on top of the Arduino, holding both of them in place. Next, if you want to have the option to easily disconnect your sensor at any point in the future without having to cut any wires, you can use two 3-pin DuPont connectors, one side male and the other side female, to connect your sensor to the three wires coming from your Arduino. Either way, you'll want the sensor's brown wire to go to your positive red wire, you want the sensor's blue wire to go to the negative or black wire from the Arduino, 
and you want the sensor's black wire to go to the signal wire that you soldered into D10. Now the last step before we can use this as an auto bed leveling sensor is to write a sketch to the Arduino. I've already written this program and included a link to download it in the video description. You'll just need to download the Arduino IDE if you don't already have it installed, connect your Nano to your computer with a USB cable, then open up nanobedleveling.ino in your Arduino IDE. Click on Tools and choose Board Arduino Nano. Click on Tools again and make sure the processor matches the processor in your Nano. If you ordered the ones from the video description, you'll use ATmega328P. Then under Tools Port, choose the port that matches your Arduino Nano. Click on the Upload button to write the sketch to your Arduino and you should be good to hook it up to your printer. If you're making the sensor for your CR10 like I am, then you'll unplug the cable from your Z-axis end stop, feed that wire into the nano case through the hole that's next to the USB port hole, plug that cable into the three pin connector that you soldered into the board, then route the other three wires out of the same hole to attach to the pins from your sensor. Then it's simply a matter of updating your firmware to use the new sensor. I'm not going to cover how to set up your firmware in this video, but I do plan on making another video shortly that will explain how to configure Marlin to work with this new sensor. And on with the free stuff. If you're interested in winning one of the two nano bed leveling systems, just make sure you're subscribed to my channel and leave a comment on this video. I'll use a random comment selector to choose the winners two weeks after I upload this video, and I'll send them off after I get your details. I can ship outside of the United States if needed, but the DC adapters included are specific to US plugs, so keep that in mind. Anyway, feel free to click the like or subscribe button if this video was at all helpful to you. Also, if you're interested in purchasing a CR10 or a TiVo Tornado, I have coupon codes for both in the video description below, as well as affiliate links to purchase either one from Gearbest if you want to help support the channel. If you are considering the TiVo Tornado, check out my last video where I show how to set up a BL Touch from start to finish. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to my friend Bryce for suggesting the Nano approach. I'm pretty much brand new to doing anything with Arduino, but this was a good first project that was actually surprisingly easy. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time!